Have you ever wondered how space stations, those massive structures orbiting Earth, came into existence? Let's rewind the clock and dive into the enigmatic origins of these colossal celestial homes. The concept of a space station was first proposed in the early 20th century. Yes, you heard it right. The idea was floating around even before we had the technology to launch rockets into space. It was Konstantin Tsiolkovsky, a Russian scientist, who first hypothesized the idea of a space station in 1895. But it wasn't until the mid-20th century that these ideas began to take shape. In the 1950s, Werner von Braun, a German-American aerospace engineer, proposed a wheel-shaped space station that could spin to create artificial gravity. The idea of living in space was no longer a fantasy. It was a challenge waiting to be conquered. But the road to realization was fraught with obstacles. The early stages presented numerous challenges, from the technological hurdles of building and launching a structure into space to the physiological and psychological effects of living in microgravity. The sheer scale of these challenges makes it easy to appreciate the marvel of engineering that space stations represent. It's a testament to human ingenuity and perseverance that we dared to dream of such feats and then turned them into reality. Yet, the journey of space stations is not just about overcoming challenges. It's also a story of international cooperation, a beacon of unity in a divided world. The International Space Station, a joint venture of multiple nations, stands as a testament to what humanity can achieve when we work together. So, how did we go from a mere concept to self-sustaining celestial homes? How did we transform a daunting challenge into a symbol of international unity and a platform for groundbreaking research? Intrigued? Buckle up as we embark on a journey through time, exploring the evolution of these celestial homes. Our journey begins in the 1970s, a time when humans first started living outside our planet. In this era of technological advancements and space race, the concept of space stations was born. Imagine living and working in space, not for just a few days or weeks, but for months. This was the ambitious goal set by the pioneers of space exploration. The first of these space stations was Skylab, launched by NASA in 1973. Skylab was essentially a workshop in space, where astronauts conducted scientific experiments and studied the effects of long-term space habitation on the human body. It was a home away from home, a place where astronauts could live and work for extended periods of time. Skylab, served as a stepping stone, a proof of concept that humans could indeed live and work in space. But the Americans were not alone in their quest to conquer the cosmos. On the other side of the globe, the Soviet Union launched their own space station, Salyut, in 1971. Despite initial setbacks, Salyut proved to be a valuable platform for space research and exploration. It was here that the first woman conducted a spacewalk and where some of the longer space missions of the time took place. These early space stations were relatively simple in design, often just a single module where astronauts lived and worked. But the experience gained from these missions was invaluable. Astronauts learned how to live in zero gravity, how to conduct scientific research in space, and how to cope with the psychological challenges of living in such a remote and isolated environment. Yet, these space stations were more than just laboratories or homes in space. They were symbols of human ingenuity and determination, evidence of our ability to push beyond the boundaries of our planet and venture into the unknown. These early space stations paved the way for more complex structures that would soon orbit our planet. But that, dear listeners, is a story for another time. Moving into the late 20th century, we witnessed the birth of a monumental achievement, the International Space Station. 
The International Space Station, or ISS, was not just another step into the cosmos. It was a step taken together by nations across the globe, a testament to what we can accomplish when we set aside our differences and work towards a common goal. It was the epitome of international cooperation, a project of unparalleled scale that involved 15 nations and five space agencies, including NASA, Roscosmos, ESA, JAXA, and CSA. The primary purpose of the ISS was to serve as an orbiting laboratory where scientists could conduct experiments in a unique environment of microgravity. It allowed us to study the effects of long-term space travel on the human body, to test technologies for deep space missions, and to carry out research that could not be done anywhere on Earth. But the ISS was more than just a laboratory. For the astronauts living aboard, it was home. The astronauts, often from different nations, would spend months together in the confined quarters of the space station, sharing meals, celebrating holidays, and working together to maintain the station and conduct their research. They lived in a world without up or down, where water droplets could float in mid-air and where the view outside the window was always of Earth from space. Life aboard the ISS was not always easy. There were the physical challenges of living in microgravity, from the muscle and bone loss to the difficulty of doing simple tasks without things floating away. There were the psychological challenges of isolation and confinement, of being far from family and friends, of seeing the earth from afar but not being able to set foot on it. But despite these challenges, or perhaps because of them, life aboard the ISS was also a testament to human resilience and adaptability. The scientific research conducted aboard the ISS has been far-reaching and diverse. It includes studying the effects of microgravity on the human body, observing Earth's climate, and conducting experiments in physics, biology, and chemistry. The research has led to advances in our understanding of a wide range of phenomena, from the behavior of fluids in microgravity to the way plants grow without gravity. But perhaps the most important achievement of the ISS is not any single piece of research or technology. It's the demonstration that international collaboration in space is not only possible, but beneficial. It's a realization that space is not a place for national rivalry, but for global cooperation. It's the understanding that in space, as on Earth, we are stronger when we work together. The ISS marked a new era in space exploration, but our journey doesn't end here. As we venture into the 21st century, we encounter a new breed of space stations, the self-sustaining ones. A self-sustaining space station is not just a structure, but a cosmos in miniature, a tiny world, a microcosm. It's not just about surviving in space, but thriving, creating a sustainable environment that could sustain human life indefinitely. What makes a space station self-sustaining? The answer lies in three main technologies, recycling systems, renewable energy sources, and hydroponic farms. Firstly, let's talk about recycling systems. In the vast, unforgiving expanse of space, waste is not just an inconvenience, it's an existential threat. But in a self-sustaining space station, waste is a resource. Advanced recycling systems capture and process everything from carbon dioxide to human waste, turning what would be a problem into a solution. Water is continually purified and reused. The air is constantly refreshed, and even solid waste is repurposed. Every part of the system is designed to support every other part, creating a closed-loop ecosystem that mirrors the natural systems on Earth. Next, we have renewable energy sources. Here on Earth, we're used to thinking of energy as something that comes from outside, something we mine or drill for. But in space, energy must be harvested. Solar energy is the most obvious choice, with the sun providing a virtually limitless supply of power. 
But other options are also being explored, such as nuclear fusion, which could provide a clean, sustainable source of energy for space stations far from the sun. Finally, there's the matter of food. We can't very well take a cow to space now, can we? This is where hydroponic farms come in. These space-efficient farms use nutrient-rich water to grow plants without soil, providing fresh produce for astronauts. Not only does this provide a critical source of nutrition, but it also contributes to the station's recycling system, with plants absorbing carbon dioxide and releasing oxygen. It's a perfect example of the harmonious interdependent systems that make self-sustaining space stations possible. Now, it's important to note that these technologies aren't just theoretical, they're being tested and refined right now on the International Space Station and other research platforms. Every day, we're getting closer to the dream of a truly self-sustaining space station. Self-sustaining space stations represent a new frontier in space exploration. They're not just a stepping stone to other worlds, but a destination in themselves, a place where humans can live and work for extended periods. They're a testament to our ability to innovate, to adapt, to reach for the stars and make them our home. Self-sustaining space stations may sound like science fiction, but they are rapidly becoming a reality. And as we continue to push the boundaries of what's possible, who knows where this journey will take us. Creating a self-sustaining space station is no easy task. It comes with its own set of challenges. Now, let's delve into the labyrinth of these challenges and explore the potential solutions that are on the horizon. First up, we have the technical difficulties. A self-sustaining space station is a marvel of engineering, a veritable symphony of technology. But this symphony is not without its discordant notes. For instance, creating a closed-loop life support system, one that can recycle air, water, and waste, is an intricate dance of chemistry and engineering. However, scientists and engineers are tirelessly working on refining these systems, and we are inching closer to a solution every day. Resource management is another significant challenge. Space, as you might imagine, is not exactly overflowing with resources. Creating a system that can efficiently use and recycle the limited resources available is critical. The introduction of in-situ resource utilization, a fancy term for making use of what's available locally, is one promising avenue. For example, using lunar or Martian soil to create building materials or mining asteroids for precious metals. Then, there are the psychological aspects. Living in a confined space for extended periods can take a toll on the human mind. The isolation, the monotony, the sheer alienness of it all can lead to stress, anxiety and other mental health issues. But fear not, Space agencies and researchers are investing heavily in understanding these issues and finding ways to mitigate them. From designing more comfortable and homely habitats to providing psychological support, numerous strategies are being explored. Now, let's switch gears and talk about the ongoing research aimed at overcoming these challenges. Scientists are experimenting with advanced materials and technologies to make space habitats more efficient and comfortable. Biologists are exploring the potential of using plants and algae for air and water purification. Psychologists and designers are collaborating to create living spaces that are not just functional, but also promote mental well-being. While these challenges may seem daunting, they are not insurmountable. In fact, they are the very thing that drives us forward, that pushes us to innovate and explore. Every problem solved, every challenge overcome, brings us one step closer to the dream of a self-sustaining space station. And let's not forget the potential benefits. Imagine a network of self-sustaining space stations serving as stepping stones for deep space exploration. 
think of the scientific discoveries waiting to be made, the technological advancements that could be spurred, the new frontiers that could be opened up. The possibilities are as vast as space itself. Despite these challenges, the potential benefits of self-sustaining space stations are immense. So, let's keep reaching for the stars, let's keep dreaming and exploring, because who knows what wonders await us out there, in the cosmos. So what does the future hold for space stations and space exploration? As we stand on the threshold of a new era, the horizons of space exploration are expanding beyond our wildest dreams. The future promises a thrilling prospect of lunar bases and Mars missions, a testament to human ambition and the unyielding spirit of discovery. Imagine the Moon, our closest celestial neighbour, not just as a silent spectator in the night sky, but as a bustling hub of scientific activity. Lunar bases are more than a possibility, they are an impending reality. These bases will serve as vital outposts for research, resource utilization, and as stepping stones for further space exploration. They might even become the launch pads for our journeys to the farther reaches of space. And then there's Mars, the red planet, a world of untold mysteries waiting to be unraveled. The plans for Mars missions are not merely about setting foot on another planet, but about establishing a human presence there. These missions will push the boundaries of our understanding, driving technological innovation and inspiring generations to dream bigger, reach further. In this grand scheme of things, Kalthaus YC, so self-sustaining space stations could play a crucial role. Imagine them as cosmic greenhouses, providing life support in the void of space, or as interplanetary pit stops supplying resources for long-duration missions. These self-sustaining stations would also serve as laboratories for studying the long-term effects of space living on humans, helping us prepare for the challenges of permanent extraterrestrial habitation. Yet, for all the potential these advancements hold, they also remind us of our responsibility to tread carefully, to respect the cosmic order, and to preserve the integrity of these alien worlds we aspire to explore. The evolution of space stations is a testament to human ingenuity and our relentless pursuit of knowledge. The future is vast and unknown, but one thing is certain, our journey in space has only just begun.